First things first, guys. His name is Kolasinac. Everything else is bullshit. Here's the deal with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. You guys know Nabi Keita, right? Mendy's strengths are, I mean, anyone who watched him play last season knows that he's a fantastic attacking player. He's a very, very strong runner with the ball. He can go both outside and inside defenders. And then I think he's arguably the best crossing fullback in Europe. In fact, he actually led all of Europe last season with uh, 6.8 crosses per match. Um, He's a, he's a very complete fullback, I think, already at such a young age, so it's hard to pick out too many weaknesses. If I had to go with a couple, I would say that he uh, has a tendency sometimes to be a bit impatient one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, he can dive in at times when he doesn't exactly have to. And then his first touch isn't exactly the cleanest, uh, which can be a bit of a problem in a Guardiola system where the fullbacks sometimes have to come inside and uh, receive the ball under pressure. But my overall verdict would be uh, he's, he's a really top, top prospect and I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the best fullbacks in the world in the next few years. So for the price they paid, I mean, it's a huge fee, but I think he'll end up well worth it. First things first, guys. His name is Kolasinac. Everything else is bullshit. Only after a few match days in Bundesliga, Schalke is already missing Kolasinac. Why? Besides his physical skills, this guy is a mental monster. He's one of the guys that can infect the whole crowd with one tackle or one offensive move. He's extremely focused on the pitch and an aggressive leader. And his body language can help a struggling team. He loves to set off on offensive runs and is always good for a surprise assist. Well, his technical skills are limited and he sometimes really loses the overview in close situations. The other thing is he definitely has to work on his defensive positioning, especially on high balls when they fly over his head. So overall, Kolasinac has the potential to be a fan hero at Arsenal. Physically, mentally and financially, he's the total package. Uh, I've watched Lindelof playing many, many times in the Portuguese league. I'd say that his best quality is probably the ability, his passing ability. Uh, the way he starts uh, a play from, from his box. Um, he's capable of doing that and it's not something you can see in many defenders these days. On the downside, he still needs to work on his tackling, particularly in his timing. Also, there's also the fact that is moving from the Portuguese league to the Premier League, it's a big, big jump, so he probably needs some time to adjust. Weighing all the factors, I think Lindelof might be a good signing for Manchester United, although they probably pay way too much for him. All right, here's the deal with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. United have signed him twice on a free in 18 months. If that's not a fantastic signing, I don't know what is. Also, Zlatan can really, really help their marquee signing, Romelu Lukaku. Here's how. Lukaku's positioning, off the ball movement and pressing is subpar when compared to players like Zlatan. Zlatan is an expert at those things. He can help Lukaku become the perfect all-round striker for United. And this is really important. Zlatan isn't stupid. He's not unrealistic. He may be arrogant, but he knows his place on this team. If he signed a contract with United, he's definitely talked to Mourinho about where his place is on the team. That will be on the bench with Lukaku playing. He'll be coming on as a sub, and with the Champions League, League Cup, FA Cup, and the Premier League, they will be rotating a lot. Zlatan also makes the United bench one of the strongest in the league. I don't think there's a single club that is happy to see him back in a United kit. You guys know Nabi Keita, right? That one guy from every Leipzig who had one good season and now every big club in Europe wants to buy him? Well, he can do just about anything and everything on the pitch. He's quick over shorter distances, decently fast over longer ones, agile with and without the ball. He can pick a pass, has impressive range and outstanding vision. And he supports his defense, can throw in a tackle if he needs to. I'd say Keita has the potential to be a world-class midfielder. He's a perfect fit for Liverpool. The only real weakness he has is his heading ability. In his last Bundesliga season, he lost 70% of his aerial duels. But that's a price you would pay for someone of his potential. Nabi Keita is somewhat of a unique player and you could call him master of all in midfield. He's perfectly suited for Liverpool and Klopp's high press system. Liverpool have made a great deal and will be able to snatch a world-class player for the 2018-19 campaign.